Okay, in this um, section we're going to take a look at right triangles and specifically Pythagorean theorem. So when you have a right triangle, this little box generally notes that you have a 90 degree angle, which is called a right angle. Now a right triangle is any triangle that has a right angle. Now one important term that you need to know is hypotenuse. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is always across from the 90 degree angle and it's always the longest side. The other two sides are called legs. Now the Pythagorean theorem says this. For any right triangle, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Now you probably saw this in pre-algebra and you learned a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well that's fine as long as c, c is the hypotenuse, but sometimes c is not the hypotenuse. It might be one of the legs. So I want you to memorize it. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Now we're going to use that theorem to do two things. First of all, we're going to prove something. We're going to check to see if something is a right triangle. And we can also find the missing side if we know it is a right triangle and we have two of the three sides. So let's look at an example. Let's say we've got a triangle and it has the sides 4, 9, and 12. If I want to see if that's a right triangle, all I need to do is see if 4 squared plus 9 squared equals 12 squared. Well, 4 squared is 16. 9 squared is 81, and 12 squared is 144. 16 plus 81 does not equal 144, so this is not a right triangle. Okay, let's see if this is a right triangle. I need to see if 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. The longest side is always a hypotenuse, so that's the one that goes by itself. 9 plus 16, does that equal 25? Yes! This is a right triangle. This is a right triangle because 9 plus 16 does equal 25. If I want to find x, I need to put the three sides into the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. 10 is a hypotenuse. It's across from the right angle, so I know it's the hypotenuse. So I get x squared plus 64 equals 100. Now to solve this, I'm going to subtract 64 from both sides. And I get x squared equals 36. If x squared equals 36, then I can finish solving this. I know that x has got to be 6. I can think of it this way as well. If I take the square root of both sides, then I get x equals plus or minus 6, but because I'm talking about a triangle, there's no way that I can get a negative 6. So it's got to be a 6. So this number here would have to be a 6 in order for that to be a right triangle. Okay, let's look at another one. In order for this to be a right triangle, I must have 2 squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. That's 4 plus y squared equals 25. If I subtract 4 from both sides, I get y squared equals 21, which means y has to be the square root of 21. Because when I take the square root of both sides, I can't simplify radical 21, so I leave that as my answer. Do not put that in a calculator. Leave it as a radical. If it happens to be a radical that can be simplified, like radical 20, then now I expect you to simplify it. But this is as simple as it can be. Let's do one more. This one has the unknown as the hypotenuse. So I've got 2 squared plus 4 squared equals n squared. So that's 4 plus 16 equals n squared. So that's 20. So if n squared equals 20, and I take the square root of both sides, 
I get n equals the square root of 20. But I can't leave the square root of 20 as the square root of 20. I'm going to have to simplify that. Let's get rid of this. So when I simplify this, I know that the square root of 4 is 2, and then I have the square root of 5. So what I end up for my answer having is n equals 2 radical 5. You must simplify it if you can.